Hey guys and welcome to the show. So in today's video we're going to be talking about ground. As you can see here in this demo, our dinosaur is dancing around but not on the ground that we see. Remember he is bouncing up and down on that invisible block. In one single space we only have one single block that he interacts with. This ground that we see coming from right to left is only an illusion. We don't interact with it in any way. Um, but it does move from right to left at a, well, at this current point in time, a fixed speed. Pretty cool, huh? So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create uh, this ground object, how to make it move, and uh, then reappear back on the other side, perhaps with a different kind of form. So as you can see here, most of the ground is this flat horizontal line. However, at certain points in time, it is creating little hills and little dips in the terrain. Without further ado, let's jump into the code. I'm going to show you just how to make this awesome ground. Okay, so we're going to be using the project files from uh, part 3 um, to carry on from here. And if I expand sprites, you'll notice that I've added SP, this is supposed to be SPR, uh, rename SPR ground. So these are four ground sprites. We have this one, which is like a flat terrain. The last one, also a flat terrain. Then this one is a bit of a dip. And the third one, is a bit of a mound. Okay, so we want to create more of these flat terrains to make the dips and the mounds a bit more special. So I'm thinking let's create dips and mounds 20% of the time and the other 80% let's create these normal flat terrains. So let's head into objects, let's say create objects, obj ground, and assign the sprite, like that. Then we need a create event. In here, I'm going to randomize the seed. Uh, let's make this bigger. Very good. I'm going to say var n equals i random 10. So get random integer between 0 and 10. And here, I'm going to say 20% of the time, uh, create a special type. So here I'm going to say, well, if n is less than equal to 1, do one thing, so that'll be 0 and 1, else do another. So in this case, I'm going to say image index equals choose 1 and 2. We'll go back to our sprites, 1 and 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So that's the special kind, 20% of the time, special kind. Otherwise, let's do image index equals choose, and this is going to be 0 and 3. So that's the normal kind of terrain. Then our image speed is going to be zero. I don't want it flashing between those sprites. And I'm going to add a step event, which is simply going to make it move from right to left. So I'm going to say speed equals negative 20. So this is the initial base speed. It will be moving from right to left. And I'm times that by the global dot speed modifier. Now we haven't implemented the speed modifier just yet. It will be coming up in one of the future videos. But for now, it's just going to be moving at 20 times 1, because I believe the global speed modifier is 1. If the x coordinate is less than 0, so if we're out of the screen, then I want to randomize and pretty much actually let's go to our create and let us grab this code over here. Bingo spango. Inside that, x is less than 0. We're going to be finding another random uh, integer checking if it's less than or equal to 1 and choosing a special kind of image index or a normal image index over here and then lastly I want to say move wrap and it's got some options this is wrap move wrap and it says here horizontal uh, yeah that's the one we want vertical not so much and then here it says the margin well that's going to be sprite get width and that is the width of the current sprite index. And one more racket. Cool. Next thing we do is let's save. Uh, remember object ground. Let's clear up all these things. Head to our room. Expand. Okay, here's our, our room over here. Um, there's our dinosaur. Pretty empty at this point. Let's grab some of these object grounds. Let's put them next to each other. And there we go. They're quite small. And then let's select all of them, and let's make quite a lot of them here. Let's move these couple under the dinosaur. Hmm, see about there, that looks good. Paste again. Paste again. 
and one more time maybe cool then I'm gonna go ahead and add one before and one after you'll find out why later on when we do that speed modifier sometimes these things can't um, be, well they're not sometimes these aren't created fast enough because the game can move really quickly so we'll manage that uh, for now but later on we might improve upon this solution so the dinosaur is going to be about there and uh, that's the ground behind him gives it a bit of depth that's really awesome um, so let's go ahead and save and play the game now not much would have changed the dinosaur is still going to be jumping up and down on his block nothing's changed there the ground will be going uh, right to left and as soon as this little block goes out of the screen over here it's going to be teleported to the other side where it will have its sprite adjusted so we might see uh, little dips and little mounds quite uh, quite soon. So let's exit the room, let's save, and let's play. All right, there we go. Check that out. We've got a lot of mounds and a lot of dips. Maybe we can decrease that to make sure there are fewer of them. But the game's still working as it did before. We haven't changed anything about the mechanics. The dinosaur is still able to jump and duck and pretty much everything that he could before. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you've got any cool ideas of things we can do in this series, please let me know as early as possible so I can come up with a solution and uh, prepare for the video for you guys. If you like what I'm doing here, as well as all the other things I've got on my channel, please check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. It goes a long way. The project files for this video can be found in the description or be attached to a public Patreon post for everyone to get a hold of and improve upon. In our next video, we're going to be doing the hit detection finally between our dinosaur and uh, the environment. So that also means a game over screen. And maybe let's actually throw in a restart game while we're there. So it's going to be a bigger video than uh, these last two that I have been putting out, which is going to be quite exciting. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.